Roy Wegorl's goal of the season, Easter Thursday, 3 May 2018 1641 by Clive Whittingham QPR finished their season at Elland Road on Sunday, where once Roy Wegorl's mesmeric genius inspired a winning comeback from two goals down. Memorable match leads United to QPR 3, Saturday October 20, 1990, First Division The pub quiz question on the last English manager to win the league championship in this country remains a favourite, and following Alex Ferguson's latest success earlier this year the answer remains Howard Wilkinson. After a low-profile playing career Wilkinson made his name in the game as a manager, first promoting Sheffield Wednesday to the top flight and establishing them there in the mid-1980s and then repeating the feat with Leeds United. He arrived at Elland Road in October 1988 and won the second division championship in his first full season in charge with a team that included the likes of Lee Chapman in attack and Chris Fairclough in defence either side of a central midfield partnership of Vinnie Jones and Gordon Strawn. Upon promotion Leeds added Gary McAllister to the midfield instead of Jones brought in goalkeeper John Lukic from Arsenal and promoted youth team graduates David Batty and Gary Speed. It was a formidable outfit for a newly promoted team but early results were mixed, wins at Everton and Sheffield United were offset by defeats to Luton, Spurs and Leicester. When QPR arrived in West Yorkshire in mid-October Wilkinson's team had won four, drawn three and lost three. Rangers' record was almost identical. They won three, drawn four and lost three of their opening ten games with a 6-1 home win against Luton and early win against bitter rivals Chelsea in W12 with Kerry Dixon hacking a penalty over the bar at the loft end the highlights and a 1-0 home setback against Wimbledon and 3-1 loss at Coventry best off forgotten about. They'd been very reliant on enigmatic South African-born USA international striker Roy Wagerl though. Don Howe's Rangers scored three goals in their first four matches that season prior to the Luton thrashing and Wegerl got all of them. What was to follow from him at Elland Road would go down in QPR folklore. The focus before kickoff had been at the other end of the field. QPR had picked out Czech international goalkeeper Jan Stegskull from that summer's Italian World Cup as a potential signing but he wanted to stay with his hometown club Sparta Prague until they were eliminated from that season's European Cup. That left Howe persevering with accident-prone youngster Tony Roberts until Stegskull arrived, and when the new men finally did touch down on these shores he found himself thrust into a debut in the cauldron of Elland Road. That wasn't an ideal situation to be in, and Leeds smelt blood early on. A routine early free kick down the field was flicked on by John Pearson and that tempted Stegskull from his line allowing centre-back Chris White to hook into an unguarded net with just a quarter of an hour played. Unnerved, the keeper then threw a ball out to left back Kenny Sansom that was never on, he was robbed of possession by Strawn and when the diminutive Scott Cross Lee Chapman was unmarked six yards out and hammered in a second. A defeat seemed inevitable, a question of how many. But the visitors, resplendent in red and black hoops, found a way back into the game before halftime. A young Les Ferdinand harried White out of possession on the corner of his own penalty box which allowed Simon Barker to accelerate to the byline and cut the ball back for Ray Wilkins to hammer home from 18 yards out. Then, on the stroke of halftime, a moment of vintage Wegerl genius leveled the game. Collecting the ball wide on the right flank, only 10 yards inside the lead's half, he set off towards goal at no great speed but with consummate control of the ball. In all he tempted six Leeds players into tackles only to then skip round them before dragging the ball back and dropping his shoulder on the edge of the penalty area and unleashing an unstoppable low drive into the corner. It was a miraculous, mesmeric goal, totally typical of the man. It was later voted the top flight's goal of the season, only the second time a QPR player had won the award following Jerry Francis's famous effort against Liverpool at Loftus Road back in 1975 Trevor St. Clair's bicycle kick in an FA Cup tie with Barnsley in 1997 subsequently made that three. Even the notoriously harsh home fans at Elland Road had to applaud. The momentum was with QPR at this stage but a typically generous hometown decision gave Leeds a penalty after halftime, Maddox harshly adjudged to have pushed Chapman under a deep corner, only for Strawn to smack his shot flush onto the face of the bar while trying to beat Stegskull up in his top corner. That paved the way for a memorable comeback win for the Londoners. Five minutes from time a scrappy piece of play on the edge of the Leeds area was tidied up in typically calm and composed style by Wilkins who caressed a perfect pass into the path of Wegerl and he swept home the winner past Lukic and into the far corner. His ninth of the season, QPR's first away win of the campaign, a day those present in the caged away end will never forget. QPR finished the season 12th Leeds an impressive 4th. 
Leeds, Lukic, Sterling, Fairclough, White, Paddock, Batty, Strawn, Pearson, McAllister, Speed, Chapman, QPR, Stedgeskull, Parker, McDonald, Maddox, Sansib, Bardsley, Wilkins, Barker, Sinton, Ferdinand, Falco, Wegerel subs not used, Sinton, Wilson attendance, 27,443 other highlights greater than greater than greater than QPR 2 leads 1, 92 90 thirds greater than greater than greater than QPR 4 leads 1 and 91 90 seconds greater than greater than greater than leads 2 QPR 3 19 90 greater than greater than greater than leads 2 QPR 1 FA Cup 86 87 greater than greater than greater than QPR 2 leads 0 and 75 76 greater than greater than greater than leads 2 QPR 2 73 70 fourth recent meetings QPR 1 leads United 3 Saturday December 9 2017 championship QPR's winter slump continued with a defeat to Leeds in December that once again extended a winless run to six matches under Ian Holloway a tight first half had seen Luke Freeman and Connor Washington miss from close range but the visitors cut loose after half-time with three goals from former Oxford man Kamar Roof. The first was a close-range header on the hour, the second a volley from only slightly further out five minutes later and the hat-trick goal was swept under Alex Smithies in an injury-time counter-attack. QPR scored with their first shot on target just prior to that, Pavel W.S. Zolex chip through ball allowed to bounce in by hapless keeper Widewalt, but the German redeemed himself by rushing out to stop Idris Asilla making it 2-2 just before Roof sealed the game. Roof hadn't scored in nine matches prior to that and has only managed 4 and 16 since. QPR, Smithies 6, Zolik 6, Onuo a 6, Robinson 6, Bidwell 6, Silla 71, 5, Scowan 6, Hall 78, 6, Freeman 6, Luongo 6, Chair 6, Osei Samuel 64, 5, Washington 5, Smith 6, Subs not used, Cousins, Manning, Lumley, Wheeler goals, Zolik 89, unassisted, Bookings, Scowan 20, Foul, Luongo 55, Foul, Leeds, Widewald 5, Ailing 6, Jansen 7, Cooper 7, Barati 6, Vieira 7, Pennington 80, Philip 7, Ilyowski 7, O'Kane 70, 6, Says 8, Roof 8, Ekuban 5, Sabitsky 38, 6, Subs not used, Lonergan, Borthwick Jackson, Anitas, Shaughnessy goals, Roof 63, assisted Ilyowski, 64, assisted Sabitsky, 94, assisted Says, Bookings, Phillips 29, Foul, Vieira 56, Foul, Ilyowski 60, Descent leads United 0, QPR 0, Saturday March 11, 2017, Championship everything but the goal for impressive QPR at the peak of their 2016-17 powers at Elland Road when these sides met in March. With four wins from the previous five, and a 5-1 win against Rotherham to come the following week, QPR played superbly against fourth-place Leeds, shedding the division's top marksman Chris Wood out of the game and failing to score only because Connor Washington started his shot around Rob Green out too wide of the post and couldn't bring it back in. Where it all went wrong from there possibly lies in the team selection, Furlong, Onuoa, Hall, Zolik and Matt Smith all in from the start. Leeds, Green 6, Ailing 7, Bartley 6, Jansen 6, Berardi 5, Britkett 6, Vieira 6, O'Kane 78, 6, Roof 6, Sacco 60, 6, Hernandez 6, Pedraza 6, Daukara 73, 5, Wood 5 subs not used, Cooper, Silvestri, Taylor, Dallas Bookings, Ailing 35, Foul, Alfonso 48, Foul, Britkett 66, Foul, O'Kane 94, Ungentlemanly, QPR, Smithies 6, Furlong 6, Onuo 8, Lynch 7, Bidwell 6, Freeman 8 Hall 7, Luongo 7, Zolik 7, NG Bikoto 79, 6, Smith 6, Silla 78, 6, Washington 6, Mackey 80, 6, Subs not used, Goss, Ingram, Manning, Morrison Bookings, Bidwell 87, Foul, Mackey 94, Ungentlemanly, QPR 3 leads United 0, Sunday August 7, 2016, Championship There were a few signs of the respective seasons to come for these two sides on the opening day at Loftus Road. Robert Green, making a swift return to W12 after a summer release, dropped one in his own net after five minutes to set the scene. All this been about QPR's ridiculously harsh pre-season under Jimmy Floyd Hasselbaugh and rang true as they ran leads off the park, eventually scoring a deserved second when Jordan Cousins won a penalty and Jaron Cherry converted. Seb Poulter volleyed a third in an injury time. Of the QPR players involved that day two have been sold, one has been bombed out, and three are out on loan. Leeds, meanwhile, have climbed into the promotion picture. 
QPR, Smithies 6, Oniwoa 7, Cocker 7, Hall 7, Bidwell 7, Gladwin 5, Cousins 56, 7, Henry 8, Luongo 8, Shodipo 6, Elkayati 68, 6, Cherry 7, Perch 88, Polter 8, Subs not used, Lynch, Washington, Ingram, Kapekua goals, Bombag 5, Assisted Cherry, Oniwoa, Cherry 73, Penalty, 1, Cousins, Polter 93, Assisted Oniwoa, Bookings, Gladwin 25, Foul, Bidwell 31, Descent leads, Green 3, Barati 3, Hoyle 22, 6, Bartley 6, Bomba 4, Taylor 6, Vieira 6, Diagoraga 4, Dallas 5, Grimes 5, Antonson 61, 4, Roof 5, Saka 75, 7, Wood 4, Subs not used, Cooper, Turnbull, Mowat, Phillips Bookings, Grimes 57, Foul, leads 1, QPR 1, Tuesday, April 5, 2016, Championship 2 substitutions help Jimmy Floyd hassle Bank salvage a point on his return to his former stomping ground Elland Road back in April. Another injury for the luckless Jamie Mackey saw Seb Polter step forward from the bench in the first half and when he drove into the penalty area four minutes from time and was felled it presented second half sub Duran Cherry with a chance to score from the spot. That was only an equalizer through, with Chris Wood scoring from close range on 70 minutes when Rangers were caught out by Murphy's in-swinging free kick. Leeds, Peacock Farrell 5, Barati 6, Belushi 4, Cooper 6, Taylor 6, Bridget 7, Murphy 6, Diagoraga 83, Dallas 5, Coyle 86, Cook 6, Cariel 6, Moet 90, Wood 6 subs not used, Bomba, Adami, Grimes, Antonucci goals, Wood 70, assisted Murphy, QPR, Smithies 5, Onuoa 6, Hall 6, Angela 5, Perch 5, Phillips 5, Luongo 5, Forland 5, Boylet 7, Cherry 74, 6, Washington 4, Elkayati 80, Mackey 4, Polter 24, 5, subs not used, Gladwin, Henry, Ingram, Robinson goals, Cherry 86, penalty, 1 Polter, QPR 1 leads 0, Saturday November 28, 2014, Championship Neil Warnock enjoyed a revenge mission against his former employers with a 1-0 win at Loftus Road when these sides last met on this ground. The reliance on Charlie Austin, now thankfully subsided following his departure, was clear for all to see as he settled a drab match with almost his first touch as a second-half substitute, powering in a header for Mail Forland's corner. Earlier Robert Green had come tearing out of his area for no good reason leaving Chris Wood to run in behind him but the New Zealand forward took too long over his finish. Leeds, didn't muster a serious shot on target all game and would have lost by more but the form of their goalkeeper Seal Vestry who saved brilliantly from Holland Cherry late in the second half. QPR, Green 5, Perch 6, Oniwoa 7, Hall 7, Koncheski 6, Petrasso 6, Austin 57, 7, Sandro 7, Forlan 8, Yun 6, Cherry 57, 7, Boylet 7, Henry 89, Phillips 6, Subs not used, Luongo, Smithies, Angela, Tajar goals, Austin 58, Assisted Forlan, Leeds, Seal Vestry 7, Wooden 5, Belushi 5, Cooper 5, Taylor 5, Moat 6, Botanka 67, 5, Bridget 6, Cook 6, Dallas 6, Antonucci 5, Er win. A. Wood 4 subs not used, Byram, Murphy, Daokara, Adami, Peacock, Farrell booked, Bridget 6, Foul, Wooden 35, Foul, Cook 82, Foul, QPR 1 leads 1, Saturday March 1, 2014, Championship QPR had a last second volley from Clint Hill ruled out for offside when these sides met at Loftus Road during the 2013-14 season, as Harry Redknapp's promotion chasing side was forced to settle for a televised draw. The R's had an early let off when Ross McCormick saw a penalty saved by Rob Green after a foul by Richard Dunn, but McCormick curled one in from a 25 yard free kick moments later to give the visitors the lead. Jermaine Jennis well take an equalizer before halftime looked to have set the R's up for a win when Hill volleyed home in stoppage time, but the offside flag cut celebrations short. QPR, Green 6, Hughes 5, Onuoa 6, Dunn 5, Hill 6, Boylet 4, Keen 62, 5, Jenna 6, Carol 81, Henry 6, Torer 6, Morrison 6, Benny 85, Doyle 6, Subs, Suck Young, Murphy, Mega, Sendles White Goals, Jenna 44, Assisted Doyle, Bookings, Jenna 59, Foul, Henry 87, Foul, Leeds, Butland 6, Peltier 6, Lees 6, Pierce 6, Warnock 6, Keeb 5, Byram 96, Murphy 6, Brown 80, Austin 6, 
Stewart 6, Moet 70, 6, McCormick 7, Wickham 6 subs not used, Hunt, Smith Wooden, Karen's goals, McCormick 14, unassisted, bookings, Warnock 32, foul, Keeb 46, foul, Moet 92, foul, Leeds 0, QPR 1, Saturday August 31, 2013, championship the first meeting between these sides that season was hardly a treat for the Saturday lunchtime television audience either, but it provided a vital three points for QPR at Elland Road. The Rs had the ball in the net before halftime through Joey Barton but the midfielder was incorrectly flagged offside and the goal ruled out. Clint Hill scored one that did count 15 minutes from time and despite Rudolph Austin striking the Rangers crossbar from improbable range with the final kick of the game the London side were reasonably good value for a hard-fought scrappy victory. Leeds, Kenny 6, Peltier 6, Wooten 6, Pierce 6, Warnock 5, Murphy 6, Green 6, Diouf 80, Austin 7, McCormick 5, Varney 5, Smith 57, 6, Hunt 5, Polian 57, 6, Subs not used, Ashdown, Drury, Lees, Tunge QPR, Green 6, Simpson 7, Dunn 7, Onuoa 7, Hill 7, O'Neill 5, Woolet 64, 7, Henry 6, Orland 72, 6, Barton 7, Wright Phillips 6, Johnson 6, Genesis 88, Austin 6 subs not used, Murphy, Suck Young, Zamora, Sheriff Goals, Hill 75, Assisted Barton, Bookings, Hill 86, Foul, QPR 1 Leeds United 2, Saturday May 9, 2011, Championship Technically QPR had sealed their status as champions of the second tier, and promotion to the Premier League, with a 2-0 win at Watford the week before the final game of the 2010-11 season at home to Leeds. However a hearing over the legitimacy of the Ale Forland transfer, which only started four days before the final game of the season and subsequently dragged on until 45 minutes before kickoff, meant the whole thing was in doubt right down to the wire. In the end the FA decided that although QPR had gained a sporting advantage by conducting the transfer in the illegal manner they did, a points deduction was not necessary and Rangers were free to lift the trophy. It was a generous decision, owing more to the timing than the evidence, but the whole process had taken a lot out of Neil Warnock's team. Despite Hyder Helgeson scoring from close range in the first 30 seconds lead spot back and scored two of their own through Max Gerdell and Ross McCormick to win 2-1 thereby inflicting QPR's only double defeat of the promotion season. Not many around Shepherds Bush cared though, and the party continued long into the night. QPR, Cerny 5 or 6, Connolly 6, Gorks 6, Hill 6, Ramage 65, 6, Derry 7, Orland 6, Routledge 6, Buzzsaki 7, Tarap 55, 5, Smith 6, Helgeson 6, Sheeta 72, 6, Subs not used, Putnans, Aguming, Moan, Ephraim Book, Tarap, Descent, Goals, Helgeson 1, Assisted, Smith, Leeds, Schmeichel 6, Connolly 6, Naylor 6, Kiss Norbo 79, 7, O'Brien 6, Litchage 6, Gradel 7, Watt 85, Kilkenny 6, House in 6, Johnson 6, McCormick 7, Painter 5, Sama 65, 6, Subs not used, Higgs, Bruce, Livermore, Bromby goals, Gravel 38, Assisted Naylor, McCormick 68, Unassisted, Leeds United 2 QPR 0, Saturday December 18, 2010, Championship QPR suffered their first away defeat of their 2010-11 promotion season at Elland Road in December. Having gone 19 games unbeaten at the start of the season, culminating in a 2-1 home win against nearest promotion rivals Cardiff the Rs then collapsed to two defeats in a week with near neighbours Watford winning 3-1 at Loftus Road and then leads out muscling them in West Yorkshire. QPR missed great chances at the start of each half, Tommy Smith lobbing Kaspar Schmeichel but missing the goal as well in the first five minutes, and Otto Tarapt having a goal-bound volley blocked away right after half-time. In between those two incidents Max Gradell had slammed in a loose ball in the penalty area and then in the second period with QPR overcommitted and Fitzhall backing away at a terrifying rate Gradell ran through to at a second. Ultimately only some fine late saves from Paddy Kenny kept the score down. Leeds, Schmeichel 6, Connolly 6, Bruce Bromby 11, 7, Collins 7, McCartney 6, Kilkenny 7, Housen 7, Johnson 7, Gradell 7, Sam 76, 7, Becky 08, Painter 90, Snodgrass 7, Subs not used, Higgs, Faye, Sama, McCormick booked, Connolly, Fighting, Goals, Gradell 25, Assisted, Becky 70, Unassisted, QPR, Kenny 7 or 6, Gork 6, Connolly 5, Hill 4, Hall 46, 5, Derry 5, Walker 5, Mackey 6, Smith 6, Ephraim 
Imperium 75, 5, Tarupt 6, Hull 6, Helgeson 75, 5, Subs not used, Cerny, Clark, Rowlands, Tophis booked, or, Foul, Hill, Foul, QPR 2 leads United 2, Tuesday August 8, 2006, Championship right at the very beginning of the 2006-07 season, Rangers and Leeds shared the spoils in an opening night Loftus Road thriller. After a meek 2-0 defeat on day one at Burnley QPR looked set to par the course again when Eddie Lewis gave the visitors the lead midway through the second half. Step forward young Ray Jones, who combined with Shabazz Beidou in the final half an hour of the game as a substitute to win QPR a famous point. Rangers drew level with a Martin Rollins penalty after a generous decision from referee Kevin Friend who had judged Gareth Ainsworth to have been fouled in the box. From the kickoff Jeff Horsfield restored Leeds' lead with just eight minutes to go but Beidou scrambled an equaliser and Jones went within a whisker of winning the game outright in stoppage time. PR, P. Jones 9, Big Nut 4, Beidou 76, 8, Rose 4, Stewart 4, Milanese 5, Ainsworth 7, Lomas 7, Rollins 7, Burcham 89, Cook 7, Ward 7, Zerkas 5, Jones 54, 7. Subs not used, Cole, Kanyuka. Goals, Rollins 80, Penn, Beidou 90 bookings, Stewart 39, Leeds United, Warner 7, Kelly 7, Craney 5, Butler 7, Healy 7, Carroll 76, 6, Horsefield 8, Moore 84, Lewis 7, Stone 8, Back 7, Westlake 50, 6, Derry 6, Kilgallen 6. Subs not used, Gregan, Blake. Goals, Lewis 65, Horsefield 82 bookings, Craney 6, Derry 45, Warner 79, Kilgallen 90 Previous results head-to-head -head greater than greater than greater than Leeds wins 21 greater than greater than greater than draws 16 greater than greater than greater than QPR wins 18 in 2017 18th QPR 1 Leeds 3, Zolak 2016 17 Leeds 0 QPR 0 and 2016 17th QPR 3 Leeds 0, Bombog, Cherry, Poulter 2015 16 Leeds 1 QPR 1, Cherry 2015 16 QPR 1 leads 0, Austin 2013 14 QPR 1 leads 1, Genesis 2013 14 leads 0 QPR 1, Hill 2010 11 QPR 1 leads 2, Helgeson 2010 11 leads 2 QPR 0, 2006 07 leads 0 QPR 0, 2006 07 QPR 2 leads 2, Rollins Penn, Beidou 2005 06 leads 2 QPR 0, 2005 06 QPR 0 leads 1 2004-05 QPR 1 leads 1, Gallon 2004-05 leads 6 QPR 1, Ainsworth 1995-96 QPR 1 leads 2, Gallon 1995-96 leads 1 QPR 3, Dickio 2, Sinclair 1994-95 leads 4 QPR 0 and 1994-95 QPR 3 leads 2, Ferdinand 2, Gallon 1993-94 QPR 0 leads 4 and 1993-94 leads 1 QPR 1, Meeker, 1992-93 leads 1 QPR 1, Ferdinand, 1992-93 QPR 2 leads 1, Bardsley, Ferdinand, 1991-92 QPR 4 leads 1, Ferdinand, Allen, Sinton, Wilson Penn, 1991-92 leads 2 QPR 0 and 1990-91 QPR 2 leads 0, Wegerel, Barker, 1990-91 QPR 0 leads 3 asterisk, 1990-91 leads 2 QPR 3, Wegerel 2, Wilkins, 1980 687 leads 2 QPR 0 asterisk asterisk 1982-83 QPR 1 leads 0 Hardog 1982-83 leads 0 QPR 1 Allen 1978-79 leads 4 QPR 3 Walsh Roeder Busby 1978-79 QPR 0 leads 2 asterisk 1978-79 QPR 1 leads 4 Easto 1977-78 QPR 0 leads 0 and 1977-78 leads 3 QPR 0 and 1976 77 leads 0 QPR 1 Easto 1976 77 QPR 0 leads 0 and 1975 76 QPR 2 leads 0 Thomas Bulls 1975 76 leads 2 QPR 1 Bulls Penn 1974 75 QPR 1 leads 1 Givens 1974 75 leads 0 QPR 1 Francis 1973 74 QPR 0 leads 1 and 1000
1973-70, fourths leads 2 QPR 2, Thomas, Bowles, 1968-69 QPR 0 leads 1 and 1968-69 leads 4 QPR 1, Wilkes, 1951-52 QPR 0 leads 0 and 1951-50 seconds leads 3 QPR 0 and 1950-50 firsts leads 2 QPR 2, Shepard, Smith, 1950-51 QPR 3 leads 0, Shepard, Hatton, Penn, Mills, 1949-50 QPR 1 leads 1, Best, 1949-50 leads 1 QPR 1, Poynton, 1948-49 QPR 2 leads 0, Adenal 2, 1948-49 leads 1 QPR 2, Gibbons, Pattison, 1931-32 QPR 3 leads 1 Asterisk Asterisk Crib, Rounds Asterisk League Cup Asterisk Asterisk FA Cup Connections Tony Ingham Greater Than Greater Than Greater Than Leads, 1947-1950 Greater Than Greater Than Greater Than QPR 1950-1963 Tony Ingham remains QPR's record appearance holder to this day, despite leaving the club way back in 1963, and in the modern era it's unlikely anybody is going to beat his 548 league and cup outings for the Super Hoops anytime soon, particularly with the turnover of players at Loftus Road these days. Ingham was born in Harrogate in 1925 and spotted playing local football there as a 22-year-old just after the Second World War. He served in the Royal Navy during the conflict, and completed an electrical apprenticeship while playing part-time for Harrogate Town which is where the local league side Leeds United picked him up from. He'd intended to be a full-time electrician until that point. He stayed at Elland Road for four years but only made three appearances for the senior team after finding himself stuck behind first John Charles and then Jimmy Milburn. Wasn't exactly a regular at QPR either having moved down to London to join the Rs in 1950 for a fee of £5,000. He made his debut in a 2-1 home defeat by Doncaster Rovers in the second division in November 1950, Cyril Hatton with the QPR goal, and only missed two matches for the rest of the season. Nevertheless, he started the 1951-52 campaign out of the side and bar two outings at the end of November and beginning of December in 2-0 and 4-0 defeats to Birmingham and Leicester respectively. He didn't start playing regularly again until the Christmas and New Year period when he was recalled for a 3-2 home win against Swansea Town. Rangers were relegated from the second division into third division south that year. Ingham is quoted on the Leeds United history site saying, One more point would have kept us up and we should have got that in one of our last games against Cardiff City. Alf Sherwood punched the ball off the line but the ref never saw it so we didn't even get a penalty let alone a goal. We were drawing at the time and that goal would have given us the extra point to stay up. But in his third season with the club he made the transition into first team regular, missing just three matches in the entire Division 3 South campaign. He was rarely out of the starting 11 for the following decade after that, remarkably completing the 1956-57, 1957-58, 1958-59, 1959-60 and 1960-61 seasons without missing a single League or Cup game 272 consecutive appearances. That meant, amazingly, that having returned to the side after a four-match absence, for a 1-0 win against Exeter on February 25, 1956 he didn't miss another competitive match until a 1-1 draw at home to Bournemouth on September 16, 1961, some five and a half years later. Have that Armand Traoré. Left-back isn't a position conducive to prolific goal-scoring of course, and for all his loyal service, he only managed six in his entire time with the club before retiring in 1963 but he was around for the start of the Alex Stock and Jim Gregory revolution at Loftus Road which would see Loftus Road entirely redeveloped and the club eventually become a top-flight regular. Gregory dissuaded Ingham from leaving W12 in the early 1960s with an offer to stay on at the club after his retirement. Despite being a born and bred northerner, he came to call London and QPR home, staying on at Loftus Road in various capacities for many years afterwards back in the days when a job at QPR was a job for life and people like the late Daphne Biggs would be around the club for decades. Ingham was commercial manager, club secretary and on the board of directors at various points. He had a suite in the South Africa Road stand, named after him in recognition of his commitment and long service. Ingham died in April 2010 aged 85 following an illness.
Others greater than greater than greater than Patty Kenny, Leeds 2012 to 2014, QPR 2010 to 2012, greater than greater than greater than Neil Warnock, Leeds manager 2012 2013, QPR manager 2015 present 2010 to 2012, greater than greater than greater than Hogan Ephraim, QPR 2007 to 2013, Leeds loan 2009 2010, greater than greater than greater than Sean Derry, QPR 2010 to 2013, Leeds 2005 to 2008, greater than greater than greater than than Rob Hulse, QPR 2010 to 2013, Leeds 2005 2006, greater than greater than greater than Liam Miller, QPR 2009, Leeds loan 2005 2006, greater than greater than greater than Simon Walton, QPR 2007 2008, Leeds 2004 to 2006, greater than greater than greater than Serge Bronco, QPR 2004 2000.